Okay, hi. Um, it's a long time since I've done a video. Um, I hope this goes well. I've forgotten how to do all this stuff, so <laughs> let's see how it goes. I was going to have a look at uh, Factory by Sugar Bites today. Now, I'm slightly obsessed with Sugar Bites at the moment. I love all their stuff. Um, Aparillo is, is a thing of beauty. Uh, I, I love Factory. Uh, in fact, uh, I wanted to do a, a, a video of all of their, um, all their stuff, but uh, it's all fiendishly complicated and, and very hard to fit into a reasonable timescale. So I'm going to start with this one because despite its depth and complexity, I think it's the probably the easiest to explain of all of them. So this is Factory and it's an amazing sounding synth, uh, but right now I've got it set on the, uh, the init setting, which incidentally, if you ever want to find this, it's not quite as intuitive as it might be. You have to go into the big cloudy page and somewhere over here you'll find in it, there are tiny little letters there. Click on in it, and then you've got a list of uh, initialized patches, and you want the sugar bites in it patch, and then come out of there. That's the sugar bites in it patch. Right, uh, so what do we have in factory? Well, with, as with all things sugar bites, we've got basically elements. So the elements of all sugar bites things seems to be interesting oscillators. These are interesting oscillators. They they are. Uh, I've got all sorts of fun stuff going on there. We have um, filters, actually surprisingly few filters for a Sugar Bites product, but still a very nice range of filters. Uh, we have um, an absolute mass of modulation going on. That's the main thing. All Sugar Bites seem to do is huge amounts of modulation. So we've got uh, envelopes, we've got a sequences, we've got the arpeggiator, uh, we've got effects and uh, three effects slots per voice, but many, many effects to choose from. And uh, and then we've got this thing here, which is the modulation matrix, which allows you to uh, modulate anything with anything else. And this is where all the uh, the madness comes in. So, uh, interestingly, most of these things, or a lot of these things can be randomized, especially in the, the mod matrix. Uh, but let's have a look at the from the beginning. So if I go over here, Oscillators. Now we've got some lovely oscillators in here. If we just have a look at uh, oscillator one, which I uh, let's turn oscillator two down, have oscillator one playing. So, an interesting, interesting oscillators. Sugar bites do so well because all their oscillators are um, so far away from your standard saw and sine and that kind of stuff. So, we've got pulse sync here. Nice screamy sync on it. Pulse width modulation, pulse width modulation. Um, then we've got this source sync. For even more screaminess. Um, Saw fractal. Which just sounds fantastic. Then over here we've got uh, FM formant. There's, there's your FM index, there's your feedback. Shift and the ratio, which is quantized. So anything you get out of the ratio is still going to be uh, fairly harmonic. Uh, there's a transformer. She's like a little, little granular thing. So I'm choosing a grain and I'm running it through some kind of formant. I'm not really clear on what's going on there. Um, I think it's very similar to something that happens in Cyclop. So uh, I might we come might come back to that. Um, over here we've got wavetable pulse wave modulation. Pulse wave modulation. Sorry. So you can go through your wavetable and let's find a nice one. Let's try vocalish there, uh, oxymoron. So you can find a spot on your wavetable and then put some pulse modulation on it, which is kind of cool. Um, wavetable sync. 
A lot of these very screamy noises at the top end here. Wavetable format. And uh, lots of wavetables. Wavetable drone. This jitter here. It's obviously jittering up its position on the wavetable. And the more you jitter, the more it sounds again, it's kind of a granular thing. Um, so, great set of uh, waveguide. What's waveguide? Sorry. Not sure about that one. Anyway, um, <coughs> so really interesting oscillators. Lots of very involved sounds. Um, and obviously, you can see this A and B here. All of those can be modulated by any of our modulators in the modulation matrix here. So, Plenty of room for making those sounds move and, and uh, develop throughout the course of your patch. And then we've got them, both these oscillators routing into um, this, this mixer here, so I can mix in oscillator 2, oscillator 1. We've got a sub oscillator here. You can just hear that coming, growling away underneath the everything there. And if I go up an octave, yeah, you can hear it. You can really hear it there. Um, and you've got different wave shapes for that as well so um, and then you've got a noise here as well so I've got different noises blue noise I've got pink noise uh, brown noise Once we can use the brown note uh, anyway, there we are uh, we've got filters at this earlier on you've got a whole range of filters um nothing too high in the poles but there we are and resonance and drive okay so great oscillator and filter section now in the modulators you've got a couple of envelopes here and the envelopes are pretty cool can we zoom into it I'm sure we can, but you can move the curves as you can see here. Nice visual feedback on the ADSNR. There we go. Okay, so the, the envelopes here, um, you can actually have the envelope routed through to various things. Now, envelope one here looks like it's normally set to the amplitude. So here you go. That's my attack. Here's my uh, okay, sustain. Um, but if I press this button here, I could actually set that so that the sequencer is using this envelope or the arpeggiator is using this envelope. So that's uh, kind of dizzyingly good. Um, got two of these envelopes. We've got over here LFO. Um, and again, the LFO can be applied to various things over here and applied to various things over here, LFO 1 and 2. And you've also got this sample and hold thing if you want to add a bit of uh, randomness and craziness to your sound. Then we've got four sequences. One, two, three, four. For some reason, it always goes into two first. And you can set yourself a sequence on something. So, so if I, uh, over here, what I can do is I can pick on, uh, this is what, sequence of one. And let's apply that to oscillator A's, oscillator one's A shape. There, you see that? You can see over here as I make this bubble go bigger. It's now affecting that wave there. I can make it go the other way there, but the pink. So pink is minus, blue is positive. Okay, there. So now you can see my moving through my wavetable here. Now at the bottom here, you've got all these different symbols. So I can make a little uh, Sydney Opera House there. A bit bigger. And uh, also got this run on that basically takes the, makes that just run on smoothly. And let's see if I can make that a bit clearer. Let's try something like saw fractal. Yeah, no. Two here, I can go, uh, let's have a sequence going on to oscillators 
the B. So oscillator one, part B. <laughs> As you see, you start to build up all this movement going on. Um, now the articul articulation section is um, mostly, it, it's, this half is all to do with how the keyboard works. So you can quantize to scales on the keyboard. Um, instantly, this keyboard here is absolutely useless for anything other than so, anything other than um, trying stuff out. Now I don't know if that's because of the size of my iPad and whether it's different from other iPads or whether it's always this size. But really, you never use that keyboard except for auditioning sounds. Um, but here you've got things like glide and different glide modes. Stepped mode, a bit manual mode. You've got the glides, you've got the stepped version. <laughs> so on. Alright, um, you've got um, the range of the bender, and you've got a unison mode as well. Um, and as you have more voices in the unison, then you have less polyphony in the app. Uh, in the app. Um, now this articulation over here is um, on this side you've got an arpeggiator and you've got various different modes of the arpeggiator which I haven't got time to go into so um, but you can mess around with let's just try and turn that on so that's going down and up that's going classical guitar okay um, and then you've got an effects section you've got three different slots but each of these has got a whole bunch of effects in it and, and as ever with uh, sugar bites you expect the, the they're all to be excellent which they are you can swap these around from one slot to another this way so the order that they get used <laughs> And then if you just want to mess around with stuff, you can pick on a patch. So let's just pick on there. Get rid of that. Let's pick on a patch here. Now, I can mess around with this in a couple of ways. First of all, I can take this dice here and it'll just add um, random modulation all over the place here and you can tweak that left and right and make all sorts of crazy stuff happen. <laughs> Another thing you can do is you can actually randomize what's happening on the X and Y axis here. So now you're sending stuff to complete so my patch now nothing like the original thing. So if you if you want to just start off and get a bit random, just you can just hit those things and get some some brilliant results. Uh, but overall, I think this is an amazing sounding app. I am using it for uh, almost everything at the moment, and it's just a joy. So I uh, hope I covered enough of it, and that's Factory by Sugar Bites, and I'm hopefully do. Um, <laughs> Aparillo next if I can, if I dare. Anyway, thank you. Bye.